so for my optimized portfolio lab, uh, here's what I did. So first, we have all this setup code here at this top. So what we do here is, so this is all just the methods that I used. I'll explain them as I get to them. So first we load the stock data. So we get that here. We get the symbols, which are selected by default here from the whole list. And what we do is we get we create some empty uh, lists just to store some data. And then we call get data. Now get data is from last week's lab. I slightly modified it to fit this program. But all we do is we first we get all the symbols that we want. And then we check if we've used that symbol already because there are repeats inside this database and we don't want to get the same data multiple times. So we just check it once. And if it hasn't been used, we append it to the list. And then we get the, if we find the CSV file in the data folder, we reuse uh, pandas.readcsv to get it into a data frame. And then we check if the data frame contains values in the uh, time period that we're looking for, which is here 2022. And then if so, if it is there, then we just save that data frame. If it isn't, we do not do anything to the data frame and list that symbol as one of our unusable symbols. And then we return the data frame of all the merged uh, stock ticker symbols and data that we have collected and also a list of unused symbols. So then here, what we, after we do that, for anything in the unusable symbols list, we just remove it from the list of symbols and also from the symbols data frame so that we don't uh, look, use it again accidentally later on in the program. Then once we've got all the symbols we do want with data for them, we sort, uh, we, uh, we add a total volatility and a total return and volatility uh, line to the symbols data frame. And then we calculate the daily returns for that symbol using the compute daily returns function, which here is just creates a series and then does the percent change function, drops the uh, empty lines, and then returns that series. Then if we get the we add the total we calculate the total return for that symbol and then add it to the symbol's data for, to we uh, save it to this list here. So we calculate total return here by just calculating the data from the last day of the year minus the first day of the year divided by the first day of the year using the historical return formula. And then finally we calculate volatility using this compute volatility function using the daily returns and the symbol that we're looking for. So we compute volatility here by just getting the standard deviation of the daily returns. Then we append these lists to the symbols data frame list and then once we've done that, we recalculate the selected symbols based on the new list with all the you know unusable symbols that uh, failed the error checking removed. Then we drop any uh, invalid values from the returns table in case we missed any earlier. And then we use the nlargest function to calculate the best the ten symbols since we want ten, the top ten symbols with the best total return. We save that as best returns. Then we just get the symbols by, we save the symbols separately because we need the symbols for some of our other functions. Then we get the prices, the prices specifically here using get data again, same method. And then we don't really want the unused symbols, so we just store it in a separate variable that doesn't get called again. And then we get the, ret and then we calculate the returns here by creating an empty data frame and then in that data frame storing just a copy of the daily, all total daily returns, but only with the returns for the ones we want, so that we don't have to use the entire uh, gigantic uh, uh, data frame from earlier. Then to get the, the other set we needed in task 2, which was the stocks with the lowest amount of volatility, we do the same thing using the n smallest function, and then we get all the same, we get the symbols, we get the prices and the volatility, and then the, sorry, the daily returns for the volatility, those 10 stocks. Then we just print those values out, then just to show the user which the 10 stocks are. And then we calculate the portfolio for minimum portfolio volatility for both the best and least, the sharp ratio for best and least, and the expected return portfolio for best and least. So for volatility, I just used what we already had provided to us, which was the method using uh, Sorry. 
the method using uh, where it's with the um, the covariance matrix, right? So this is just as it was with the covariance matrix, which uses the uh, portfolio volatility function here, which calculates it using this function right here. And then for the max sharp return and expected return, I use a similar method. However, I calculated the results. Of the, I used this output the same, just with some of the values changed as the previous one for both of these. However, instead of using the covariance method, I uh, copied the functions from our previous lab with assess portfolio and uh, used uh, the get portfolio value the, with the prices to calculate the portfolio value and the stats in order to get the cumulative return or total return as well as the sharp ratio and then using these functions here uh, expected return and sharp ratio we can calculate the sharp ratio and, and cumulative return or total return or expected return rather of a portfolio given certain allocations and then we can use the minimize function to test every possible variation of the calculation until we find the most efficient one so if we run this program, it will take a minute because it's a lot of a lot of uh, data files to read through. But uh, if we run this program here, you can see the ten stocks with the best historical returns and the ten stocks with the lowest volatility over the over twenty twenty two, and then we can get the minimum portfolio volatility ratio for both set A and set B, then the sh maximized sharp ratio for set A and set B, and then finally the uh, maximized expected return for set A and set B. So as you can see, that does everything we need to do for this section of the project.